Hello everyone, I am Dr. Preeti Kulbe and uh, today I am going to discuss about the regulatory affairs and uh, the overview and about all the worldwide regulatory bodies. So, uh, So in today's video, we will discuss about the uh, overview of regulatory affairs and worldwide regulatory bodies. In this video, uh, you know, uh, we will be discussing about the EMA, that is European Medicine Agency. Uh, so uh, before that, I have already made three videos related to the regulatory affairs and different different regulatory bodies of different different countries. So uh, basically, uh, you can watch those videos if you need it. And if you want the detail related to the regulatory affairs, general introduction, so you can go for definitely watch my first video of the regulatory affair lecture one in that i have uh, you know explained in detail about the um, uh, you know, uh, regulatory uh, about the general introduction related to the regulatory affairs as well as regulatory department. Uh, in uh, my uh, second video, I have, uh, you know, discussed about in detail about the US FDA and the United States Food and Drug Administration, which is the a regulatory body in US. In third video, I have explained about the EMA, that is the European Medicine Agency, uh, uh, which is the, you know, agency of which is the regulatory body of European Union or European or all the member states which are there in the Europe, okay? So uh, in this fourth video also, uh, I'm going to discuss about the EMA only. Uh, so yeah. So first of all, learning objectives. So upon completion of this unit, the students will be able to learn about general consideration related to the regulatory affair. That is, what is regulatory affair? Why it is needed? What are the different different roles and responsibilities of regulatory affair persons? So all of these things we will discuss in uh, you know this unit, and you will be able to answer these uh, questions after the completion of this unit. Other than that, uh, we have already we have also discussed about the legal issues related to the different different regulatory bodies in uh, today's video. And uh, this, uh, you know, uh, legal issues uh, is basically related to the different different regulatory bodies. For example, in India, the C uh, the CDSCO is the regulatory body. So, and in the US, there is a US FDA. In Europe, EMA is there. In Australia, TGA is there. So all the regulatory uh, regulatory bodies and what are the you know documentation requirement and what are the requirements of the, these specific um, countries we uh, you will able to learn after the completion of this unit okay other than that uh, we will also uh, discuss about the general consideration related to the INDA and NDA um, in this unit Learning outcomes. So on uh, successful completion of unit, students will be able to learn about the role of regulatory affairs department, the responsibilities of uh, regulatory affairs, and all about the regulatory bodies. That is, uh, what is the need of regulatory affairs, the role of regulatory affairs department. Okay, so we have discussed that if we talk about the role of regulatory affairs department, so regulatory affairs department is basically used to control the, uh, you know, uh, the efficacy and safety of the product as well as it is used in each and every step uh, in the development of new product. Like uh, when the, you know, new product uh, is in the R&D, then, then also there is a need of uh, regulatory affairs when it is in the production in pilot plan in each and every stage regulatory affairs is uh, uh, there as well as after the marketing uh, you know post marketing also there is a need of RA that is regulatory affairs is there so uh, when the product is reaches to the customer after that also the RA role is there so RA is a very important thing in the uh, healthcare department all the healthcare industries healthcare industry 
industries include not only include the pharmaceuticals it also includes the cosmetics the general medication the medicinal devices the veterinary product etc okay agrochemicals uh, also uh, includes uh, in this uh, type of regulatory affair department also includes in that so um, uh, this uh, is uh, the all these questions you will answer after the completion of this unit so uh, in last uh, lecture also we have discussed about some member of uh, member states of uh, this uh, european union so um, in that uh, you know there are different different member states of european unions are there so uh, this uh, i have repeated in this slide because this is an important thing uh, if you uh, missed that what are the member states so you cannot uh, you know understand the rest of the things that's why i have repeated this slide that austria that these are you can read out the names that these are the european member state union member state like austria um, uh, you know belgium uh, Cy uh, cyprus bulgaria denmark estonia finland france uh, germany greece hungary uh, you know ireland uh, Cro uh, uh, you know uh, Cro croatia Italy, Latvia, so there are multiple, Malta, Poland, there are Romania, there is, uh, you know, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and uh, United Kingdom, and many more, so all these uh, represented here, uh, it is approximately seven member states are there in the European Union, okay, so now we will discuss, we will bear the term member state is used, so that means uh, it is for the these uh, 27 uh, you know, uh, uh, member states. Okay? Now structure of EMA agency. So this also we have discussed in our last lecture, but I have again uh, you know incorporated here because it is again the important part in this slide also. If you are watching only this video, so uh, you you must uh, you know आपको समझ में आ जाए इसलिए I have uh, also uh, you know added this uh, slide again in this video. And if you uh, you know uh, if you have uh, you know uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have already seen my previous video so you can skip this slide so uh, structure of number of uh, state uh, as, uh, sorry structure of ema includes the executive director other than the executive director there are some ema permanent member and some uh, you know experts appointed members are there in permanent member there is executive director is there other than that the directors of different different um, uh, you know agencies are there like communication and networking head of communication and networking is there human medicines development and evaluation head is there the patient health protection head, uh, head is there the veterinary uh, medicine and inspection department head is there as well as the administration head is there so these are the some uh, ema permanent staff members okay six we can say one is the ex executive director and five others okay other than that some expert appointed members are there in this the seven uh, category members are there seven committees are there in the ema now what are those committees so chmp is the first committee then cvmp is there comp is there hmpc is there cat is there and uh, pdco as well as PRAC is there. Now, what are those committees? Uh, we have already discussed about some committee, some committees in our uh, last video. So, if you want uh, to know detail about these companies, uh, sorry, these committees, you uh, you know you can see my previous video that is regulatory affair lecture three. And now, the CHMP is committee for medicinal products for human use. Second is CVMP's Committee for Medicinal Products for Veterinary Use. COMP is Committee on Orphan Medicine Products. So all the orphan products because, uh, you know, included in the EMA. So that's why the Committee for Orphan uh, Medicinal Products are also there. Okay, after that, uh, HMPC is there. So HMPC is Committee on Herbal Medicinal Products. The CAT is there, that is Committee for Advanced Therapies are there. Then uh, PDCO, that is Pediatric Committee is there. 
PRAC that is Pharmaco Vigilance and Risk Assessment Committee is there. So here you can see there are seven committees which are there in the EMA. So in all these committees are related to the products which are you know uh, which are comes under the EMA that is products for the um, you know for which the um, marketing approved for the. Uh, you know, uh, products, uh, you know, that type of product for which the marketing approval is required by the EMA. Okay, so that is uh, in this, uh, if you want to market some, uh, you know, human medicinal products used for human, you have to, uh, you should have approval from the EMA. If you want to market some veterinary products, you should have the approval from the EMA. If you want to market some orphan products, either from the herbal medicines, from advanced therapy medication, pediatric uh, medication, education or the pharmacovigilance or risk assessment, uh, pharmacovigilance type of thing if you want to do. So you uh, you have to take the approval from the EMA, okay? So that means that, uh, so that's why all the committees, all the committee heads or all the committees are involved here in the, uh, you know, um, uh, in the EMA, in the EMA, okay? Uh, so yeah. So approx, uh, you know, 3,500 European experts are there in the, uh, you know, um, uh, in the EMA, we can say. Now, uh, we have, now the registration in Euro, Europe post November 2005, three European systems are there, okay? So uh, that is, if we talk about the, um, uh, you know, registration uh, of the, for the marketing approval, so there are three basic procedures related to the registration in the uh, European market. First one is the centralized procedure. This is uh, uh, via the EMA. Second one is the mutual recognition procedure. Third one is the decentralized procedure. Okay, so uh, here uh, the, uh, yeah. Here the uh, centralized, sorry, centralized procedure if we talk about, so, as the name suggests, this is a centralized procedure. So that is in centralized procedure, all the, uh, you know, uh, all the products which are used either, which are, a, which is a orphan drugs or the product which are uh, used for the uh, either uh, disease like AIDS disease, like, uh, you know, uh, like cancer, uh, it may be the, uh, the neurodegenerative type of medication. So all these medication which are, uh, comes under the centralized procedure can, uh, you know, uh, can uh, register or can take approval for the marketing approval via the centralized procedure. And for the all these things, the centralized procedure is essential or compulsory. So in this, what you have to do, if you want to take the approval, the registration approval from the centralized procedure from for such type of medication, so what you have to do, you just have to file, you just have to, uh, you know, uh, write an application and you uh, just uh, have to submit all the related documentation along with the application to the EMA. Okay, so that is a European Medicine Agency ko apne directly submit karne padenge. And after the um, EMA will, uh, you know, after the reviewing all the documents, EMA will uh, give you the certificate or give, provide you the, uh, you know, thing provide uh, give you the certificate or provide you the authority for the uh, you know marketing of that particular product and this uh, type of marketing approval which is done by the EMA is uh, you know eligible in all member states so all 27 member states um, uh, procedure is uh, you know then it is available okay this is the centralized procedure. Now, mutual recognition procedure. So, if we talk about the mutual recognition procedure, so in this, uh, the uh, you know uh, the products which are conventional use and which are also um, you know which are conventional use and used for the humans can uh, we can take the approval from the mutual recognition procedure. And in this, the member states uh, you have to file uh, for the registration to the specific member state. Okay. Now, the decentralized 
procedure decentralized procedure involves some uh, you know conventional formulation uh, which are not there in the centralized uh, for this which the centralized procedure is not essential that is optional which is comes under the decentralized procedure and in this you have to again file the um, uh, file uh, the registration form and um, uh, along with the application and the supporting documents and you can uh, you know you can submit that um, uh, file or you can file that approval uh, you can uh, file for the approval of uh, you know either one state or two state or three state at the same time you can file it for the multiple state and one thing is that the state uh, for what state you are filing is the very important thing because that uh, the if you file for a one member state then only there only you will get the approval for the marketing you cannot market that product in the other member state you can say but you can file uh, it for the um, you know multiple states simultaneously so aisa nahi ki aapko ek hi member state ke liye ek bar mein apply karna hai you can apply for the you know 20 member states uh, you know ek sath and if you if you will get the approval you can only market your product to that 20 states okay uh, so this is about the decentralized procedure so uh, the uh, registration in euro post november 2005 and uh, three european systems are there centralized procedure which is via the ema and this ema filing is essential then the mutual recognition procedure and after that decentralized procedure is there now uh, the three steps of centralized procedure so in this we have discussed that ema filing is essential so the centralized procedure basically takes the 120 uh, you know uh, you know 120 days in the first step 210 days in the second step and 67 days in the third step okay so what are these steps so this, this is centralized procedure is basically a three step process in this first step is the pre submission to applications so first you need to submit the applications and pre submission uh, of the application involved early advice so first of all you have to take the advices related to the submission then uh, then the uh, you know uh, reporter or c reporter appointment should be there which uh, you know regulate all the submission related issue then assessment team you have to make then application you have to file then you have to validate it okay so all these things which is there for the pre submission to the application Uh, so for the you know marketing uh, for the centralized procedure you, we can say so all these um, uh, you know things you should do you should take the advice you should appoint the uh, you know reporter or see reporter for the you know all the procedure then assessment team you have to make one team which assess the whole uh, thing then application you have to make and you have to validate your procedure as well as application you have to check the validation so it will take around 120 days to um, uh, to do the first step okay now there is a uh, you know uh, we can say now we can say this uh, the second step is there second step is scientific evaluation okay so in second step assessment report is there you have to uh, in first step assessment team aapne jo banayi thi you have made you have to evaluate it uh, you have to evaluate it into the second step that is scientific evaluation in this you have to see the assessment report then list of questions plus clock stops uh, you have to make related to the application or filing then chmp opinion you have to take uh, chmp uh, agency is there so you have committee is there so you have to take the opinion from the chmp and after that possibility to uh, appeal is uh, there and then transfer of eu commission is there so uh, all these uh, things that is the second step of scientific evaluation take 120 days for the approval 
Now, last is the third step is there that is decision making process. In third step, the um, it, the decision making is there and it is done by the EMA and it will take around sixty seven days. So this is the time. This time may increase also. There are very less chances to decrease of the time, but normally this time is uh, this time is given. But uh, you know this time also may increase. Okay, so the first step is pre submission to application. It will take one twenty days. Second is the sub uh, scientific evaluation. It will take two hundred and ten days. Third step is the decision making process. It will take the um, uh, you know sixty seven days. Okay. After that, uh, the um, also there is a in first step there is a notify to the EMA. Request repeater and co repeater will send the request to the EMA first. Then the in after the first attempts uh, submission of MA is there. Uh, okay, after submission of MA, there is a clock stop for answer the question and answer to question oral hearing. So uh, you know there are some hearings are there in which the all the answers should be given. And then the CHMP opinion is taken. After this, the if if the CHMP opinion is in the favor, that is favorable opinion is there, then EC that is um, the European uh, Commission uh, will draft the decision and EC decision then uh, community licensing. So it will uh, then community license. Then it will uh, the license is given if the decision is positive. Okay. So uh, this is the whole procedure or we can say of the centralized procedure and this three step process is there in first step the EMA is notified and second step the MAA submission is there and the CHMP opinion is there then in last step the EC is uh, you know drafted a decision and it will you know, give the decision and it will uh, give the community license. Now, uh, there are uh, other than the centralized procedure, there are two options. One is MRP, second is DCP. Okay, so we have discussed that what is MRP, mutual recognition procedure, and decentralized procedure. So these two options are mutual recognition procedure. This is there in the Article 28, Para 2 of uh, the you know, direction 2001 83 in the EC. You know, a European Commission and for products with an existing MA that is marketing authorization it is required. So mutual recognition procedure is basically follow for the already existing marketing approval. Just like a or member state may have marketing approval existing so you can apply for the mutual recognition procedure for this. Next is the decentralized procedure. So uh, decentralized procedure that is DCP is the other option uh, for the approval. So it is there in the article 28 para 3 of uh, direction 2001 83 EC. May give you a 2003 EC may para 2 may there is about the mutual recognition procedure and para 3 there is a decentralized procedure is given. Okay, so only possible if uh, uh, decentralized procedure only possible if no authorization has already been granted. Okay, if the authorization has already been granted, then it is not possible. So, if authorization nahi mila, so you can go for the decentralized procedure. Other than that, um, the most uh, significant difference between the MRP. Difference with MRP is equal to the concentration uh, consultation between MSs before first MA issue. Okay, so first marketing authorization of issue or as you say, MS per discussion. Hota hai. This is the main difference between the MRP and uh, DCP. In MRP, no discussion is there, but in DCP, there is a you know consultation uh, between all the you know MSs before the uh, first marketing approval issue. Okay, this is the thing which is there. So uh, this is the procedure for the centralized, for the centralized procedure, for the mutual recognition procedure and for the decentralized procedure uh, for the uh, European marketing or we can say uh, for the approval from the EMA that is European Medicine Agency.
Now next is the MRP and DCP key authority stakeholders. So uh, what are these key authoritative key holders? So first one is CMDH. CMDH is coordination group for mutual recognition and decentralized procedure for human medicinal products. So this is the CMDH. And uh, this is a you know authorized uh, authorized stakeholder for the MRP and DCP. Mixed responsibilities they have uh, you know. So this CMDH has mixed responsibilities like procedural responsibilities. There only they need to see the procedure in detail, then regulatory, then scientific. After that, other than that, one representative from each MS should be there and appointed for three years, plus over uh, observer from the EMA and commission. Okay, so that is the thing that in uh, CH, uh, CMDH, jo hai, that is coordination group for mutual recognition and decentralized procedure. There is, uh, you know, three members, there is each member from the one representative from each members of the MS. Okay, MS 27 MS, that is 27 members which are appointed for the three years and uh, you know renewable okay, after three years it is renewable and plus one observer from the EMA that is uh, the European Medicine Agency and Commission. Second is uh, CMDH chair appointed for three years so the chairperson of the CMDH is uh, you know uh, for appointed for three years after three years there is a re-election Plus a vice chairman representative of MS that has presidency of council. So uh, vice chairman is also the, um, uh, you know, there and it may also change after three years and it is representative of the, uh, you know, member states that has the presidency for the council. Now, uh, so EC uh, member of the second European Commission. Now uh, RMS, uh, for the RMS reference member state, there is a selected by the, this is RMS is selected by the applicant and has to prepare the, uh, you know, assessment report that is AR. Okay, so uh, the, this is again a stakeholder for a stakeholder uh, for uh, this. So that means the, uh, uh, the selected Uh, this uh, selected members uh, Honachi applicants applicants and has to be uh, has to prepare this RMS has to prepare the assessment report as well as acts as the central point between the MS and MAH. So MS and MAH which way there is a central point which is the RMS means they can transfer any uh, you know related uh, you know information from the MS to MAH. This is the person that is the RMS. Okay, next is the CMS that is concerned member state. So concerned member state, all other MSs where the company has submitted the dossier. Okay, so uh, this CMS involve all the companies which uh, have submitted the dossier. So all these have the member that is CMS that is known as CMS that is concerned member state. So we can say that in MRP and DCP, there are, you know, uh, three um, key authoritative uh, stockholders are there. First is CMDS that is Coordination Group for Mutual Recognition and Decentralized Procedure. Then RMS that is Reference Member State. Then CMS that is Concerned Member State. Now next is the overview of MRP. Mutually recognition procedure. Is overview guys. So it will take then they could look the national submission will take 210 days. Mutual recognition will take 90 days. Uh, the CMDH uh, will take the 60 days. Okay, so here you can see that the uh, as first of all uh, in the MRP, the first of all the application to the reference member state has sent. Okay, the reference member state send the application. Okay, then uh, to the sorry application sent to the reference member state that is RMS. Then RS RMS approval uh, is uh, will take two hundred and ten days. 
ठीक है सो इफ द आर एन एस अप्रूवल मे ऑल्सो टेक मोर टाइम बट जनरली इट इज गिवन दैट टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन डेज के अंदर आपको अप्रूवल मिल जाएगा आफ्टर दैट इट इज सबमिटेड टू द एम आर एप्लीकेशन टू द मेम्बर स्टेट ओके देन इट क्लूजर फॉर द प्रोसीजर लाइक ए आर एस एस पी सी लेबलिंग एफ ई आई एल इन सब कुछ करना पड़ेगा देन इफ देर इज अप्रूवल देन नेशनल लाइसेंस ग्रांटेड विद इन थर्टी डेज विद इन थर्टी डेज नेशनल लाइसेंस इज ग्रांटेड इफ देर इज अप्रूवल एंड इफ देर इज सीरियस ऑब्जेक्शन then it is uh, referred to the RMDH जो हमने बात करी थी अभी स्टॉक होल्डर्स है ऑथराइज स्टॉक होल्डर्स है सो आर एम इफ नॉट अप्रूवल इज देयर इफ सीरियस ऑब्जेक्शन आर देयर सो इट इज ट्रांसफर टू द सी एम डी एच एंड आफ्टर दिस ट्रांसफर टू द सी एम डी एच दिस सीरियस ऑब्जेक्शन रिफर टू द सी एम डी एच एंड इट विल टेक सिक्सटी डेज for the uh, for the inquiry and then abbreviation by ch uh, mp uh, article 32 33 and 34 so it will take 60 days for the opinion and 30 days for the commission decision so total 90 days is there uh, for the approval it will take the, for the approval if there is a serious obligation then if there is no serious application then direct approval is there within 30 days so we can say 2 10 days to isme rahenge 90 isme rahenge 330 Days, if there is no, uh, you know, uh, no uh, serious obligations are there, and if there is serious objection, so, uh, so uh, 390 days it will uh, take. So 60 days plus or something like this, right? So this is all about the overview of MRP. Now the overview of DCP. That is DCP again in DCP. First step take the 120 days. Second step is the ninety days, and uh, third step is if there is a direct approval, thirty days. If there is serious objection, if it is, uh, if it will go to the CM uh, DH, so uh, the thirty um, plus sixty uh, plus thirty that is ninety days. Okay, so uh, the overview of the um, uh, DCP. So the submission DCP step one submission of the dossier to the reference member state. and concern member state okay so uh, concern member state and reference to the member state to submission hoga then after the rms state uh, rms starts evaluation and issue pre preliminary uh, assessment report it will issue and for comments by the cms and rms sends a consolidated list of questions and to the applicant then uh, clock stop is there that is recommended for 3 months clock stop is there in this that in that time there is a evaluation is there then after that dcp 90 days uh, uh, will take the second step and the dcp so uh, rms prepared draft for the ar and draft sap and draft labeling packaging leaflet submit uh, to the mr application to member state then if then closure of the procedure then if there is approval then national license granted within 30 days and if there is serious objections uh, and so it will refer to the uh, cmh uh, cmdh and this cmdh will take 60 days and after that it will uh, you know um commission will take 30 days so total 90 days if approval is not if the serious objection if no not serious to 30 days okay so that means it will take 190 days plus 3 months uh, 3 months clock stop 190 days of approval uh, plus the 30 or 90 days okay so this is uh, the approval of the approval of this is the overview of approval of dcp okay so decentralized procedure so uh, yeah these are the references and uh, uh, yeah so uh, in this uh, in today's video we have discussed about the ema there are multiple references which are there so you can watch with you can you can visit these references for the journal introduction type of thing you can see the uh, you can just uh, search on google also or you can read uh, out uh, through the books for detailed related to specific regulatory body and its guidelines you can directly visit the site of that uh, particular body like ema ki aap site pe visit kar sakte hain ema ke bare mein uh, or uh, if you want to uh, know a 
about the CBSEO, there is a site you can uh, visit. Okay, there are multiple books also in which the general introduction related to regulatory guidelines are given. So uh, yeah, so now come to the next that is objective question. So uh, first one is the CM, uh, CHMP, main task and responsibility not include. So uh, advertising, uh, advertising on general uh, European Union guidelines, public policies, scientific advice and guidelines to companies or opinions on the uh, compensate, uh, compensate and use of MSS or marketing advice. So that is answer D is correct. That is the CHMP main task and responsibilities not include the marketing advice. Next is registration in Europe, Europe post November 2005 not include. So uh, centralized procedure, mutual recognition procedure, decentralized procedure and recommended procedure. So D is the right answer. So recommended procedure. So that means registration in Europe post November 2005 not include the recommended procedure. We have discussed a lot about the centralized procedure, the mutual recognition procedure, the decentralized procedure. So I think this question is very clear that the answer is correct. Next is the steps of the centralized procedure involved pre-submission to application, scientific evaluation, decision-making processes, all mentioned. So C is the right answer. That is steps of the decision, uh, 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 steps of the centralized procedure involve the decision-making process. Basically, we can say the last step. This is the last step decision-making, right? all mentioned so answer d is correct sorry please uh, check it that d answer is correct that is pre-submission to application is there scientific evaluation is there decision making is there so answer d is correct now what is comp that uh, in terms of regulatory affairs so comp that is commission sorry committee for orphan uh, medicinal products. Second is Center for Orphan Medicinal Products. Third is uh, Consumer for Over the Counter Medicinal Products. Fourth is Committee for OTC Medicinal Products. So COMP is stands for A, that is Committee for or Orphan Medicinal Products. So COMP in terms of regulatory affairs, Committee for Orphan Medicinal Products. The answer is correct. Now pre-submission to application of the centralized procedure involved. The pre-submission, either it is 180 days, 120 days, 140 days, 160 days. So answer B is correct. That is 120 days. So pre-submission to uh, the, uh, you know, uh, application of the um, centralized procedure involved 120 days. Answer B. Next is reference member state related to European system not include. Selected by the applicant has to prepare the assessment report, acts as central point between MS and MAH, selected by the government. So reference member state selected to, uh, sorry, related to European systems not include these, that is, selected by the government, not include the members selected by the government. Next is uh, CMS related to European system is, is concerned member state, second is committee member state, third is con contracted member state, fourth is committee member state. So uh, answer A is correct. That is concerned member state. That is CMS related to European system is concerned member state. Next is uh, the 
steps of the centralized procedure involved pre submission to application scientific evaluation decision making process all mentioned so the answer c is correct that is decision making process so steps of the centralized procedure involved the decision making process next is rms related to european system is reference member state related member state retired member state and relevant member state so answer a is correct that is reference member state so rms related to european system is reference member state next is rms approval takes 290 days 210 days 190 days and 162 days so yeah rms approval take b uh, 210 days okay so uh, yeah this thanks for your attention so this is all about the uh, you know uh, the ema we have discussed uh, the uh, regulatory affair general introduction in our first lecture in my first lecture that is regulatory affairs lecture 1 in the regulatory affair lecture 2 the all about the us fda is given in regulatory affair lecture 3 the ema uh, that is european Ag medicine agency uh, which is the regulatory guideline of uh, the european body is uh, there Uh, and in fourth also it is related to the ema the remaining part of ema uh, so if you want the previous part you can visit the previous video and if you want the uh, this uh, the description related to the other countries uh, regulatory body so you can also do also uh, see my next video so thanks thanks for watching